ETH Podcast COVID-19. Thanks for listening to the coronavirus edition of the ETH Podcast. My name is Jennifer Kakshuri, and right now I'm connected to someone who will tell us why soap, ginger, and other things make us strong against the coronavirus. So my name is Viola Vogel. I am a bioengineer. I'm a professor at ETH in the Department for Health Sciences and Technology. Viola, under normal circumstances, are you more efficient working from home or in your office at ETH? Usually, I love to work from my office at ETH, and particularly, I love to interact with my students. And where in your home are you working from nowadays? I'm using my daughter's room, which I transformed now into my home office. I assume your daughter doesn't mind. No, <laughs> she moved out. <laughs> we all know we need to stay home, keep away from other people, repeatedly wash our hands with soap. Viola, why is washing the hands with soap so effective? So the coronavirus has an envelope that protects its interior, its genetic material from getting damaged. On the outside of this envelope are these spiky proteins and they recognize the host cells. But these spiky proteins are embedded in a membrane, and this membrane contains lipid molecules, fatty molecules. And as we all know, we wash our dishes to get rid of fat with soaps. And similarly, if uh, coronaviruses are exposed to soap, these soap molecules can penetrate into the envelope and destroy it. In a much-discussed post on the ETH Zukunftsblog, you suggested to have ginger tea in abundance. What is it about ginger that reduces the risk of catching a virus? So also plants developed a lot of defense mechanisms similar to us to protect themselves from pathogens. And so many, many plants evolve different types of molecules that in some ways have structural similarities to soap molecules. So these molecules that plants developed, they have some parts that like oily interfaces and the other part likes the water interface. And so also these substances can penetrate into the outer shell of fatty envelopes. And so some of these natural compounds might have similar effects as soaps, but certainly for us a better taste. Speaking about the blog, it got very much attention and very many reactions. What was that like for you to get so many reactions to a post? So for me, it's certainly beautiful to see that people enjoy reading the post. And it also shows me how big the demand is of the public to learn a little more about their own bodies, about the journey of a virus from the nose, the mouth, into our lungs. And only if we understand these processes can we maybe do something on our own to further protect us. So everything I'm writing is not meant to replace all the measures that are in place right now. What is very important, though, is also we are constantly bombarded with pathogens. So our skin on the one side is the best protectant, but always... Some pathogens from us being born will penetrate through mouth and nose. And our lung is the most sensitive organ to follow. And so we developed a lot of non-specific mechanisms to protect ourselves from pathogen invasion. And so telling a little story about what a pathogen might see and experience as it passes and what mechanisms are in place might help people to do something for themselves and taking care of themselves a little better. Please tell us about the journey of viruses through nose, mouth, into our throat and lungs. So a virus itself is a tiny particle. A virus itself is only a nanoparticle. And in the last few years, we had a lot of discussion about fine dust, which has the same size like a virus. So if we inhale fine dust, it goes straight deep into the lung. That's why it's so dangerous. The good news for us, though, is that coronaviruses are transmitted 
as one sick person exhales droplets that are filled with the virus. And these droplets are typically a few micron in diameter. And we know that micron-sized particles get deposited not deep in the lungs, but first in our throat or in the bronchial parts of the upper lung. But in the throat, those are areas that we can still clean and rinse, similarly to our mouth and our nose areas. So rinsing our mouth, rinsing our noses uh, is one way of washing off particles that get deposited there. The interesting part is that all these surfaces are covered with tiny, slimy layers. So a particle that drops down there does not immediately infect a host cell. It takes a while for it to find a host cell. And so there are time windows for us that we can utilize to maybe reduce the number of viruses that might at the end make it into the deeper lungs. It is also very important to notice that it's not the first exposure. It's not the exposure to one virus that probably kills us. The number of viruses that we have to defend off counts whether we get seriously ill. So if we can take measures once we got exposed and we never know, even under the restricted circumstances, if we go shopping, we never know today whether we get exposed to viruses. So... Um, if we, after coming home from shopping, for example, rinse our mouth, might be effective to get rid of the ones that we might have inhaled. And then just rinse the mouth with normal water or would you use detergent, not detergents, but would you use a mouthwash or something that could then again break the molecules? So, again, I'm a scientist. I am not a medical doctor. So... I try to be very careful not to give recipes. What we know, though, is soap breaks. So we always wash and brush our teeth with toothpaste. And toothpaste has a lot of detergents, and they might be effective. Certainly no guarantee, but it could be one step to do a little to protect ourselves. And we also know that toothpaste can be used a few times a day and would not do us harm. Did COVID-19 change anything in the way you're researching right now? Not yet my active research in the lab, because all our labs got closed down. But I'm reading up a lot in the last um, two weeks in order to learn as much as I can. And also in order to learn how I can utilize my own expertise in the field to contribute to public knowledge. Let's summarize again what people can do, not as a uh, medical advice, but just as one way of keeping away viruses, also influenza viruses from bodies. Please tell us what possible remedies are. So in addition to maybe rinsing our mouth, rinsing our nose, gargling with uh, something that either contains detergents or something like ginger, um, viruses very soon also make it a little deeper into our lungs where we can't reach them as easily any longer. But then all our slimy surfaces are covered with cells and they have little hair. And the slime film is sitting on top of this hair. And they all rotate in one direction and with that, like in an elevator, they push the slime from the lungs up and back into our mouth. And this is an extremely effective way for us to clean our lungs. If that wouldn't work, probably at the end of the day, there would be so much dirt in our lung that we would not be able to breathe any longer. And also with our smokers, we see that their lungs turns black quite soon. So it clearly shows that there are a certain number of particles that we can clean, but only at a defined rate. So... If we, for example, now inhale particles that bind to these slimy surfaces, many of them will be cleaned to that mechanism. However, if the slime turns to be too viscous, which can happen with a disease, then, for example, inhaling hot water, certainly please don't burn yourself, 
that warm water, inhaling that, keeps the mucus sufficiently fluid so that it can be transported more easily. And we also know that if you have a strong cold, this is one way of cleaning the bronchi. And then furthermore, at the end of all these many branches of the lung, there are the little dead ends. They look like little bubbles. And inside these dead ends are our last defense macrophages, scavenger cells, that essentially eat up everything that arrives there from particles. And they don't distinguish whether it's a synthetic particle, whether it's an environmental particle, or whether it's a virus. But also these cells can only eat so much per time unit. If they are too overburdened with particles, then the efficiency to clear out viruses is reduced. So that's one reason why I suggest everybody who is smoking right now take this crisis seriously and please stop smoking. It might help you to survive. Thank you, Viola, for joining us. And thank you, dear listeners, for listening. My name is Jennifer Kakshuri. I produced this podcast together with Tisvachta's Audio Story Lab and sound designer Luki Fretz. You'll hear from us soon again with a further episode. Wash your hands, drink ginger tea and gargle. Take care and stay home. <laughs>